So we're going to be talking today about veterans preference, uh, specifically what it is, how it works, how you claim it. Uh, so I'm going to go over some things in this video that I think um, might help a lot of people. So uh, veterans preference is, uh, is pretty complicated. Um, so let me just switch over to my other screen here. Let's talk about this a little bit. So it applies in a couple scenarios. Um, first, it applies if you want to. If you're a veteran and you want to apply to a job that's not open to the public, uh, you can do that under veterans preference. In that scenario, you won't get points towards your final rating, but you can apply to the job. Um, whereas other people in the public cannot do that. It's only open to certain people. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Veterans preference also applies for certain veterans under the rule of three. And we're going to talk about the rule of three. I'm going to explain what that is. It has to do with your, your rating uh, toward, toward the job. Um, it also applies under veterans recruitment authority or appointments, which is a, a pretty complicated topic. We're not going to talk about that a lot here today. You don't see these often, uh, but since it's complicated, let's get that out of the way first. So. A VRA uh, allows an agency, agency to select a veteran non-competitively up to uh, for a GS-11 uh, position. So there's some requirements that the veteran has to meet to, to qualify for a VRA position. Specifically, you have to have served during a war um, or have gotten a campaign badge or medal, uh, be dis dis disabled, or um, are recently separated within three years. So all of those are ors, right? Any, any, meet any of those one things, and you have an honorable discharge, you can apply under VRA. So I'm going to give some links at the end of this and in, in the description of the video that will allow you to, uh, it'll link to usajobs.gov where you can read more about VRA um, if you're interested. So I've got a screen here uh, of a search I did at usajobs.gov, and you can see two positions here. So you'll see a little green shield, and if you notice the arrow here, that indicates that these are jobs that are open to um, veterans. Okay, so um, members of the public, I think for these these two jobs I'm showing, can't apply. I can't remember what all the little symbols mean, but the important symbol you're looking for. Uh, to apply to a veteran, a job open to a veteran is the green shield. Okay, and so a lot of these jobs uh, aren't open to the public, and so you as a veteran get to apply. Um, so that's one benefit. You have to have um, certain veteran statuses, however, to get extra points towards your rating and get uh, and get veterans preference towards hiring. You can apply to be a veteran, but you don't. You, that's a zero point veterans preference as we call it. Um, talk a little bit of, about this in a sec. So on to the rule of three and what this is exactly. So basically in many cases, uh, most cases I believe, that uh, the selection for the successful candidate is made from the highest three eligibles on the hiring certificate. So typically those are the people um, that the hiring uh, selection is made from. In many cases, um, more people are hired from that same cert, right? Um, but this is where having a veteran's preference, either five point or 10 point, can really get you a leg up. Uh, and, uh, and here's how that works. So the agency cannot pass over a, a preference eligible, that's, that's a veteran with veteran's preference, to select a non-preference eligible with the same or a lower ranking score. So if you're, you're, you have veterans preference, let's say you're a disabled veteran, um, and, and let's say you're a 10 point um, disabled veteran, okay? That means you have between 10 and 30% disability. Um, you, you, they cannot pass you over to select a non-preference eligible with the same score. And the score I'm talking about here is a score that, um, that is used to, to grade you in the selection process. So, different types of veterans preference. There's zero point, five point, and 10 point. We'll talk first about zero point. It's also sometimes called sole survivorship preference. This is, I wanna emphasize this is not the same as, as, as 
being able to apply to a job that's not open to the, the public. This is a little little bit different, but you can see here this is this is also somewhat rare. So this is for um, a person who was discharged um, on or after August 29, 2008, by reason of being the only surviving uh, child from a military family where uh, father, mother, or one or more of the siblings served in the armed forces, was killed, uh, and, 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 and so there's some other criteria. You can see that this is rare. And so most veterans, if you're, a, you're watching this video, this is not the veteran's preference you would use. Um, I want to emphasize you can still be a veteran and have the benefit of applying to numerous jobs that other people uh, cannot apply for. So here's a little more detail. I, I wanted to have a simple slide and a more complex slide for all of you that want the details. Um, but I'm also going to provide links at the end of this. You can go read this stuff for yourself. But you know, I'm not going to spend time going through all this because um, I've just went through it on a, a sim very simple and basic level. Um, I guess the, the final thing I'll say about sole survivorship preferences, there are no preference points um, when the rule of three is applied. So that's, that's uh, what I meant when I said zero point preference. Okay, so let's move on now to five and ten point preference, and that's where you get points towards this rule of three. Let's talk about that. So, first of all, five point preference. This is only going to apply to some veterans who uh, served under certain conditions. Again, I'm going to give a more detailed slide, but I wanted to just have a very simple walkthrough of what this entails. This is, this is a veteran who has served in a war or during certain times. These are often uh, conflicts, um, you know, uh, operations, operation, operation Desert Storm, for instance. Um, and on top of that, um, or they've received a certain medal or badge for operations or campaigns. Um, so this is how you get five point preference. This doesn't go to just any veteran. Again, it's during war or certain periods, times, operations, campaign badges, that sort of thing. Here's all the detail. And so um, I'll have links where you can go read this, but essentially these are the this, these are the periods you must have served to qualify for five point veterans preference. I'm not going to read through all this stuff, but it's here. If you want to pause the video, go through it again, you'll have a link at the end to, uh, to check it out. Yeah. 10 point veterans preference. So this is a, this is a, um, for a veteran that has a service connected disability. That's it's typical, typically uh, 10 percent or more, um, and is, or has received a purple heart. So if you meet either one of those conditions, service connected disability of at least 10 percent or have received a purple heart, you can get 10 point veterans preference. Again, here's a, the, the same information, but, but broken down into the all the nitty-gritty details that you can find at usajobs.gov and you can see there's there's a couple different um, types of 10-point preference don't want to go go in through all those things and I'm also going to talk about how you claim 10-point preference which is which is important so let's talk about that because that is I think where people need the most help uh, so if you're trying to claim veterans preference of any kind um, there are a couple things you're going to need so if it's if it's just to show that you're a veteran you really need a copy of your dd214 and specifically what they're going to be looking for is the member four of your dd214 that's a multi-page document member four is labeled um, but uh, and i'll give you an example in a second and, and show you what one of those looks like i'm also going to tell you where you can go and you can get that that uh, that record you can actually request it um, you'll also need if you're a disabled veteran and you're claiming trying to claim 10 point preference you're going to need a VA disability letter alternatively some things that will also qualify there is a statement of service from your command if you're currently on active duty or other official documentation um, like a campaign badge uh, they give some other examples online but really the important thing and the thing that uh, most people use is going to be the VA disability letter. I can also tell you where you can get that. You can call the VA. Uh, there's also a website you can go to. All that's going to be in the, the video description at the, at the end as well, um, the last slide. 
So if you're applying for 10 point veterans preference, there's also a form you've got to complete and it's a standard form SF-15. Uh, you got to fill that out in entirety and, uh, and specify that you're claiming veterans preference. So here's a, here's a copy of what it looks like, what the DD-214 looks like itself. I've uh, blacked out all the, the information for this particular form to protect the innocent, so to speak. But you can see down at the bottom, it says Member 4. So there were mul multiple pages to this document. Uh, what I'm showing here is the Member 4. Typically, if there's a hard copy you've got, it's notarized. Um, and, uh, and that is what, uh, uh, what uh, they will accept. So you can get this from a couple places. You receive it upon <clears throat> discharge from the military. You can also contact Defense Personnel Records. Uh, I've got their website here. Uh, those are the two ways you can get this, uh, this DD-214 Member 4. And that's really used to prove you were a veteran. Uh, and, this, and if you got a medical discharge, it will also show that. It will also prove that you were discharged under honorable conditions. So here's the SS-15 that I mentioned. Um, the website I give here is where you can find this document. It's a two-page document. I don't show the second page because um, there's not really much useful information there besides a signature block. But you can see as you walk through this, uh, this form, you fill it out, you basically claim veteran's preference. Um, and specify what type of preference uh, you're claiming here. Um, so this is uh, for your 10-point veteran's preference. Pretty self-explanatory uh, form, I think. I mentioned a VA letter. So this is an example here of a VA letter. Um, this basically states that you have a service-connected disability and specifies uh, what, what percentage it is. You can get this one of two ways. Uh, you can call the number I show here, which is the number to the VA, or you can go to the website to uh, request a copy if there's one on file. If there's not a copy on file, you're probably going to have to call the, uh, the phone number, which is the phone number to the VA. So again, that's three things we're talking about to claim veterans' preference. Of, uh, uh, and there's, there's different types, but you know, if you're just claiming zero-point preference, DD-214 right member four if you're going to claim 10 point preference you need the sf-15 um, and you also need the va letter okay so let's talk about what this looks like when you apply to a job uh, on usajobs.gov and so this is this is uh, from an application uh, on the website i pulled this down but you know basically it asks here if you claim veterans preference and you can see there's a whole bunch of ways to answer this um, so if you're claiming zero point preference, that is you're just applying to a job that's not open to the public and you're, you're using your veteran status to do that, um, I believe you're either going to answer A or B. I've never actually done that, but uh, um, you know I think that's, that's the process. You can't claim five point because you don't have five point. So if you're going to claim um, you know five point, there's also a, uh, a check mark on that you can see it says five point preference based on active duty and the US Armed Forces you basically need to show that you met those criteria we talked about earlier uh, so again um, you're submitting your DD-214 and uh, that should have on it any medals or anything like that you've earned um, or you can provide alternate proof of, uh, of, of whatever um, you did that met those criteria so, and then you have all the criteria for 10 point veterans preference. That is the purple heart, the disability, uh, and, then, and then also um, there's some other criteria there that I think are less common. So I mentioned links and uh, you know, I'd highly encourage, you know, this is a complicated topic. Uh, a video may do it for you, it may not, but um, I've tried to walk through most of the things. I would really encourage checking out that first link uh, that says Great Explanation. Um, that, that is basically the, the de facto government explanation for this, where you can find each of these types of veterans preference outlined. Also give the link here for uh, Defense Personnel Records, where you can get your two, DD-214, and then also a link to the S, uh, SF-15. And there's the phone number and website for the VA. and included a, a bunch of other links just uh, for those of you that want to read through this in more detail as it's such a complicated topic. So uh, that's it. I hope that helps a little bit and uh, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll have uh, more videos uh, on this type of stuff in the future. Thanks.